So day three, I know you've all paced yourself, you've saved up your energy, nobody looks too dog tired. So we should have a very exciting day. Uh, we're also gonna be webcast at a larger community. So <clears throat> everything you say today will go down in the archive and will last forever. And in order to record it, please use the microphones when you're speaking so people who are video casting in can hear you. Um, <clears throat> So we have, a, we have a full schedule. We're gonna keep on time today, actually. And uh, I might be a little vicious about kicking people off the podium if they go over. <clears throat> so the idea of bringing everybody together was to continue the work we've done for the last year with the CMG, which is learning and understanding about the human clinical genetics community, understanding their jargon, translating our jargon so they can understand us, and learning how to work together. And there are two kind of sections for the, for the sessions today. The first is gonna be hearing from the large uh, disease gene discovery programs. And the interesting thing is they're all organized in very different ways. So it's a, something we have to think about in terms of how we can collaborate with these programs. The CMGs works with patient communities, does the sequencing, the analysis, and returns results. Uh, Top Med is organized quite differently as large cohorts. Uh, Kids First is an X01 type of mechanism where people have access to sequencing support, but it's a much more loosely connected network of research, in, to my mind. I mean, we'll hear from them. They'll straighten us out about these ideas. And um, then we'll hear about the 100,000 Genomes Project toward the end, which is the UK program, which is a little bit more comprehensive in terms of how they have the National Health Service and, and the medical records at hand in their program, and I think they work tightly together. We'll hear a really interesting perspective from the clinical geneticist in the trenches who's interacting with the patients. That was a talk that we heard at a site visit at Davis that was really, really informative. And then the conversation starts to turn a little bit, um, <clears throat> hearing about ClinGen and the UDN mosque where we're actually down to the variant at that point. So understanding pathogen, pathogenicity of variants and functionalizing the specific human disease alleles that are being tested in the model organism screening centers of the UDN. And from that point, we'll move over to the mouse side and hear from animal modelers like Nico. Um, Gary Churchill's talking about some other mouse resources, the large DO cross, the collaborative cross, and looking at the larger genetic context of expression of, of phenotype and Steve Murray talking about penetrance. So that brings us around full circle to issues with, I think that's really true that understanding um, prediction of disease outcome in human patients re centers on penetrance and expressivity of phenotypes. So we heard yesterday that there's some people with essential gene knockouts walking around who shouldn't be among us. Maybe they're back from the dead or something, but um, how is that possible that a cell essential gene can be knocked out in a human with no, no visible phenotype? <clears throat> and then we'll hear from Child Health, which is one of our biggest supporters and collaborators. Uh, as everybody knows, the embryo lethals are our biggest bin of sort of phenotypes that we collect, our largest collection of mutants, ties into a lot of the phenotyping issues we think about. Um, we have R01s that follow up on those that are funded and supplemental support from them. So big contribution from child health. And then finally, we'll inform you a little bit about the somatic cell editing program that's just been launched. And that's important, I think, because these variants we're talking about today are gonna to become the new therapeutic target of this new technology in vivo gene editing in the clinic. And I think it's happening faster than people realize and it's gonna disrupt the existing pharmaceutical enterprise completely. So we have, to be, we have to think about what the opportunities are there and the implications. And then we will have time to have a panel discussion because we will stay on, on time. Um, Melissa Parisi has agreed to join the panel, so we actually have four panelists even though we had printed this agenda before that. So that's kind of what we want to accomplish today. We want to think big. Um, we want ideas about where this program could be in 10 years, 15 or 20 years. 
So we want to have a, 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 an audacious discussion. And we'll start after Steve gives us a little bit perspective on what we've accomplished. So we're, we're going to be talking, we're going to have two sides of the, the audience here. The human clinicians have to sit and listen to stuff that we're very familiar with, and then we'll sit and listen to stuff that they're going to find boring, but we're going to find as new, informative talks. And then we'll kick off with Chris's reminiscence about what life was like in 2003 when <laughs> this idea was launched and how far we've come and how much things have really changed and where we can go from here. So you'll get us. <laughs> 